Hi guys, welcome back to another video on Next.js 14. In this video, I'm purely going to talk about APIs, building backend, building REST APIs. So if you want to learn front end, because this is what I'm not going to be talking about in this video, I've already created almost 50 videos on Next.js 14, Next.js 13, both versions uses app directory. So you can watch and learn pretty much everything that you would need to become a good Next.js developer using app directory. So do subscribe my channel and like my video. So in this video, I've already created a new Next.js 14 project. It contains nothing new. I've not changed anything. And you can see that I'm already running this project. So in this video, I will be creating a new folder structure. I'm going to show you how you can protect your backend and also how you, we can connect our backend APIs with the MongoDB database, how we can create Mongo's models like user model, notes model, add multiple relationship between those models and how we can perform queries to fetch the data, perform CRUD operations like get, post, patch or delete operations. And finally, I'm going to be testing these APIs using Postman. So this is going to be a very important video if you want to become a full stack developer using purely Next.js. And also I will be talking about middlewares, which is very important topic. So let's get started. I'm going to stop my server. Let me clear the terminal. And uh, we have this app directory, which is by default created when we create a new Next.js 14 project. So inside this app directory, I'm going to create a new folder. So this is going to be called API. We cannot change its name. So all the API routes, whole backend should exist within this API folder. And inside it, we can create different more folders. So if we want to create API, let's say the localhost column 3000 slash API slash user. So we want to give the same name to this folder, which we want it to be a part of URL for the rest API. So I'm going to create slash API slash users. And inside this users folder, there is a predefined file name provided by Next.js. We cannot change its name. This is going to be route.ts. So this route.ts is automatically going to get executed the code inside it when we try to execute the API on the URL slash API slash users. So inside it, we can actually export the get request. This is the predefined function name. We cannot change its name. So we can have the arrow function and inside it, I'm just elaborating you guys that how the APIs are constructed. I'm going to be modifying it once I proceed further, once, once you get to know that what the folder structure we are going to follow to create APIs. So inside it, we can actually return new and then next response from the next server. And inside it, we can actually, this is my first API and I have returned this from this get request. Now I'm going to run my server again. I'm going to run my next yes project and let's go to our browser. Let's uh, refresh it so that uh, we know everything is going well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to execute this API since this is a get request, get request can be executed on browser's directory. All right, because we don't need to pass the body or something like that. So I'm going to write slash API slash users. I'm going to hit enter here. You guys, you can see that this is printing. This is my first API. So this is actually API route, the get request, which we have executed. How simple is that? We just need to define the same folder name, which we want it to be a part of URL. So now I'm going to start off connecting my project with the MongoDB. So first of all, I'm going to create a new file. This is going to be .env, which is going to store all the environment variables. Okay. So here, first of all, I'm going to create Mongo DB URI equals to, and now I need to go ahead and open up Mongo Atlas uh, website. Uh, you can go to cloud.mongodb.com and it will ask you to sign up with your account. It will ask you to create organization. Once you do that, uh, you need to create a new project. I've already done that. That's why I'm looking at uh, these a lot of projects which I've already created. And I'm going to click on the new project and here I'm going to create the project name. So I'm going to name it next 14 rest API. All right. So let's click on the next. Uh, leave the project owner because uh, I'm creating project myself. So I've clicked on the create project button. 
so it's going to create that and after that i need to set up few things i need to uh, create the username and then the password all right so let's see how it goes now it has created my project now i need to click on this create button and uh, this is going to create a cluster so for now for the tutorial purpose i need to click on this free version and uh, you can click on this any provider you can click on the nearest region and uh, we can change its name but i'm gonna go with the same one and i'm gonna click on this create button now so it's going to create the cluster uh, after that it is going to surely going to ask me so here you can see that it is giving me the password i need to save it somewhere because i'm gonna be using it in my project so i've saved it i'm gonna click on the create user so it has already created and now i'm going to add my ip i think it's already added um so here uh this ip refers to my internet connection means that the apis which we are creating can only be accessed with this network uh, if we want to allow it um, from everywhere we can do that which i'm going to show you after creating this so i'm going to click on the finish and close so go to the overview so it's going to take some time it's going to process this uh, settings which I have set uh, so once that is done uh, first of all before going to let's click on the connect button and click on the drivers and this is the URL which we need I'm going to copy this URL and I'm going to paste it over here you can see that and uh, the password which I copied earlier should be replaced here so I'm going to copy that password which I've already saved in my notes so i'm going to paste that password over here and after that i don't need to do anything all right so let's close this dot env file let's close this one let's close this one and uh, after that let's go to this mongodb and i'm going to click on the network access uh, selecting that particular cluster and add ip address and access allow from anywhere so i can click on it and it's going to add 0, 0.0 means that this particular database can be accessed from anywhere in the world click confirm so after this video i'm going to remove it because i don't want you guys to keep on triggering my apis on the same password and username which i have created so it's going to uh, create this uh, so we can leave it as it is now let's come back to our code in this code first of all i'm going to create a new folder which is going to be called lib all right so in this lib folder i'm going to be creating a new file this is going to be db.ts all right before writing any code inside it i'm going to install mongoose package so in the terminal let me clear this out so it becomes clear to you so npm install and i'm going to write mongoose so this is a very important package uh, which we can use to create models as well as to connect to mongodb database all right so once it's getting installed we can start importing it in this file so i'm going to write mongoose from mongoose all right so after this we can bring up that particular url which we created in env file so i can write the mongo db uri equals to process.env uh, dot mongodb uri all right so this is what i have imported now uh, we can directly write this command but i don't want uh, to connect directly i want to create a function so this is going to be the connect equals to async and then i'm going to create a ready state since we are going to call this connect function from every api i want to check if the connection was already established i don't want to re-establish the connection with my database so i'm going to check it with my connection state equals to mongoose dot connection dot ready state all right so first of all it gives us four or five i think different values so i can write connection uh connection state 
I need to copy this one. Okay. Connection state equals to one. If it is one, it means that we are already connected. So we are simply going to return from here. Let me log this out as well. So already connected. All right. And after this, I can simply return. Let me copy this if condition and I'm going to check it with two. So it il, it is going to show me the connecting. All right. And after this, I'm going to start connect to the database. If both of con these conditions fails, it means that uh, we need to connect. So I'm going to write mongoose dot connect mongo URI, which we have fetched and then db name we need to define the db name let's give it the rest api next 14 all right and after that uh, we can simply define the buffer commands uh, false all right so it is showing me this error so let me hover this out so argument of type so it it is considering that this particular variable can be undefined sometimes. Okay. But we know that, uh, this can never be undefined because we have successfully defined over here. So just to let it know that we are hundred percent sure we can add this exclamation mark that it will never be undefined. Okay. So after this, once that is done, uh, we can simply write connected. All right. So, then let's add the catch block as well in case there is an error there is some network error or some other error uh, that cause disconnection so error in connecting to database let's also log the error as well all right uh, and also let's throw new error error connecting to database all right uh, this is just a message all right so we are done creating it if we go up we actually need to export this connect function because we are going to be accessing this function from outside this file from the api routes so finally i'm going to write export default connect so we are done with this file uh what is that actually i'm going to remove it so I'm going to close this DB file. I'm going to close this ENV file and inside this lib folder, I'm going to create another folder and this is going to contain all the models. So I'm going to be creating few models, which is going to be user model and the notes model. And also I'm going to create the relationship between these models. So first of all, I'm going to be creating this file user.ts and also I'm going to be creating notes.ts. So in this file, I'm going to create a user schema schema means that what are the different properties this user is going to have for elaboration purpose. I'm going to add few properties, which is going to be email username and the password. I'm not going to implement the full authentication system. I've already created a lot of videos on authentication, even using the next auth auth JS or clerk authentication. You can check that out. This is just for elaboration and I'm talking about rest APIs in this video only. So I'm going to first of all import and I need to import the schema. I need to import the model. I need to import the models and this is going to be from mongoose. All right. And below this, I'm going to create a new and I'm going to name it user schema. Let's create a new object for the schema class, which we have imported above and let's add the email. And uh, this is going to be one of the type, uh, one of the property for the user. And this is going to be of type string. And this is going to be required. And this is going to be unique as well. Okay. So once we are done after this, uh, I'm going to create a username equals to type string required true um, and then the unique true and after this I'm going to have the password this is also going to be string and the required 
true. Uh, so if you are curious what uh, extension of VS Code is actually suggesting me, the content is actually the tab nine, which I'm using. You can install the ex extension in your system in VS Code, uh, and that is going to help you out while writing code. So now I'm going to write uh, const user, and first of all, I'm going to check if models dot user already exists. Otherwise, I'm going to write them, create a new model. Let's add the equal to sign as well over here. So inside uh, this model, uh, actually, I need to write like this. So user, user schema, which I've created above. Let's export this out, export default user. All right, so that's pretty much it we need to do. We can have more properties uh, for this. Just to let you know guys that I have created 40 plus videos on Node Express MongoDB and that is an advanced course. If you want to learn advanced schema creation using the Mongos, you can check that tutorial series on my channel, Node Express MongoDB tutorial series crash course. You can search that out on my channel. Now we are done with creating the schema for the user. Let's go open this up notes and I'm going to create the schema for the notes as well. So first of all, let's copy this line and then I'm going to create note schema equals to new schema. Uh, and inside it, it is going to take few properties title and then the type equals to the string. This is going to be of type string. This is going to be required. Let's add the description. And this is going to be of type string. Uh, I don't want to keep it required. So let's keep it like this. Now the next property is very important. This is going to be relationship with the user. So I'm going to give it the type and the type is going to be the schema dot types dot object ID and then I need to define its reference. Reference has to be the name of the model which we have already created. So I will be creating APIs that will actually allow us to fetch the notes, only those notes which belongs to a particular user. The users who have access to their own notes will be able to perform CRUD operation for only those specific notes using the get put post or delete requests. So after that, I'm going to create the note equals to models dot note. Otherwise, I'm going to create model and let's add the note and then note schema. Let's export this out now. Uh, so we are done with this model. We are done with the both the models. Let's close these files. We are done with this setup. Now it's time to go back to our API directory and start creating APIs using this uh, schema models and this configuration for the DB, which we have added over here. So this is our route.ts file, which I already created. I tested that out. First of all, I want to structure my API folder structure. So I'm going to create a new folder inside this API and it's going to be wrapped inside this parentheses. Wrapping it inside the parentheses means that we don't want to include it as a part of the URL structure for the APIs. We are just creating this folder uh, to structure our code, to look it better. So the reason I've created and named it auth because I want to create all the authentication authorization related or user related APIs should be added within the auth folder. So I'm going to move my users folder inside this auth folder as well. All right. So now this URL is going to be same slash API slash user. This is just for structuring. If there is any other thing, let's say forget password or reset password or profile API, then the same uh, folders can be added within this auth folder. Now we have this route.ts file added over here. I'm going to create and modify this get request. Uh, so I'm going to fetch all the users which exist in the database. Currently there are no users exist in the database. I just want to verify if the connection to database actually successfully done and we are successfully fetching the users from the database which are zero currently, but it should return empty array. Okay, so first of all, at the top, I'm going to import the connect function from the libdb, which we have created. 
all right so inside this get request i'm going to start off with creating the try block and let's wrap it with the catch block so error like this so inside the try uh since this is the async function so i'm going to write await connect all right this is going to make connection to the database uh, and after this i'm going to fetch all the users so this is going to be const users equals to await user this is going to be coming from the models user it has automatically imported at the top and user dot find this is going to find all the users and store it inside this particular variable these are the pre-built functions provided by mongoose uh, you can refer the documentation if you want to know more about that and after this it is going to return the response uh, in the form of json so i'm going to write json dot stringify users and in the second param we can actually return the status 200 as well all right and uh, after this we can also return uh, the uh, this response and this is going to be with the new keyword sorry all right so this is going this is not going to be json this is going to be like this and error in fetching users uh let's also concatenate the error and also let's add uh, the status equals to 500 in case there is an error all right so now i'm going to test this api which i have modified let me run the project in the terminal uh, also save this file and in the browser i'm going to hit the same url which i hit before which is going to be slash api slash users so let's go to the local host uh, this is giving error maybe because of the caching let's hard refresh and yes you can see guys it is returning empty array and if we see the terminal you can see that it is showing connected means that our database have been successfully connected and that's why it is returning empty and if we go to our database uh, let's go to the collection and it should automatically create the users model within this database name uh, you can see that it has created database name which is coming from this lib folder which we provided the name over here and also it has created the name of the model as well this is uh, actually showing that we have successfully uh, connected to database and this user is showing the result zero all right so now i'm going to create the post request this is going to you can say a sign up for the user before moving forward i just want to let you guys know that if you want any development services in web development mobile development from me you can contact me on linkedin i've given the link in the description of this video and also i have the whatsapp channel with the same name programming with umair i've given the link of that channel in the description of this video do check that out and do follow my whatsapp channel as well so let's get started and create our post request so this is going to be in the capital letter post and this is going to receive the request so request and this is going to be of type request and we can have the response as well uh, we don't need that because we are using the next response class which we have already done so this is going to be equal and then the arrow function actually all right so in this first of all let's add the try block and let's add the catch block again with the error like this so first of all what we need to do we need to receive the data which will be coming from client client can be the same application which we can create the component within our app folder uh, or it can be the postman it can be angular javascript or any third party external front end application this is what the client means uh, i'll show you by testing on the postman because i'm not going to create any front end in this video so try and this is going to be received body await request dot json all right and also this is going to be an async because i'm using await keyword over here so await and async means that until and unless i'm not able to get the data using this function it will not move to the next line of this code okay i need to have the data proper data after this i'm going to connect to the database 
okay and then i'm going to create a new user with the data which is coming from the client and this is the syntax for that user is the model uh, which is already added above i think yes it is already added and uh, this is going to be passed with the body this particular class actually require the json data for the body and when we use this function to get the data from body it is automatically converted in the form of json so we don't need to convert that body data uh, body data means the model data this email username and the password it is already converted into the json while we are passing in this class okay so after this i'm going to write a built-in function which is going to save save is going to store the data for this user in the database it is automatically going to add the id and the timestamps and all these things okay and um, now this is going to uh, show me this hint the tab 9 this is awesome uh, return new next response json let me verify that it is returning uh, this thing user and we can actually return the json as well so message user is created and then new user uh, user colon new user uh, this is going to be this new user all right so i need to close this as well okay so this is going to be 2001 which is the success response and then inside the catch block i don't want to uh, explain it uh, again which i've already done above in the get request so if there is an any error it is going to show me this thing all right so i'm going to save it uh, keep the server running in the terminal and now I'm going to open up the Postman. Postman is an awesome tool which we can use to test the APIs. We can document the APIs. We can create environment variables. All right. So I can create different folders. Uh, this is what I have created REST API tutorial. I can create a request. I can add the request for the get. So get users. Let me first verify by clicking on this. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to click on the send. You can see that it is returning uh, empty array, same as the browser. It means that it is working fine. Now let's save this and let's create another request. So let's right click on this folder and I'm going to click on the add request uh, and let's change its name, uh, create user. Okay. And also change its type, which is going to be the post request. And uh, I'm going to paste uh, the name localhost colon 3000 it's showing me these kind of url because i was already been testing these apis before creating this video so api slash users it's going to be on the same url because uh, this refers to the same folder structure but the method is different okay and now you can see that here it we actually implemented to pass the data inside the body okay so i'm going to click on the body and i'm going to click on this raw and i'm going to click on this json okay so here i need to give the data so let's verify what the data we have here so we have this user we have email username and then the password all right so first of all let's add an email uh, umair1 at gmail.com any random email um, and then I'm going to write username and this is going to be the umair and then we can write any password to it make sure you add the exact same keys uh, so let's add this random password all right so let's click on the send all right so it is showing let me click on the json user is successfully created and this is the data returned from the created user we can verify that and i'm going to click on this refresh on my database and let's see if we have actually data added over here or not yes guys so our data for the user is successfully created in the database as well uh, all right so we can actually create the second user as well so let's add the umair mirza uh, let's change the password as well let's click on it and this second user have been created as well and we can 
use this API to verify all the users and let's go to the get request. Let's click on the send. And here you can see that there are two users exist in the database which are successfully created. Now I'm going to create a couple of more APIs. One is to edit the data for the user and also to delete the user. After that, I'm going to be creating APIs for the notes, which is very important because note has a relationship with the user. Okay. So now I'm going to go to the route.ts and I'm going to create a new request and this is going to be the patch. All right. So let's come over here. So export const patch. All right. Like this. And this is going to have an async keyword as well. And inside it, it is again going to have the request. All right. So inside this patch request, I'm first going to add the try block, just like the previous thing. Try. Uh, no, I don't want that. And let's add the catch block as well. All right. So inside the try block, first of all, I'm going to connect to the database. Uh, we can actually fetch the data from uh, the body first of all, if we want. Uh, so let's do that. So first of all, we have this body await and then the request dot JSON. Okay. And after this, I'm going to get this data. I'm going to get the user ID and then the new user name equals to body. This user ID is referring to the user which needs to be updated. And this is the data for this particular user that needs to be updated inside that user. So both the things will be passed from the postman from the client actually. Okay. So after this, let's add click on the connect. Uh, this is already added here. I think I clicked on the tab. I'm just going to remove it. All right. So after this, first of all, I'm going to verify that if this user ID is valid or not, if this user ID actually exists or not. Okay. So I can do that. First of all, let's go at the top and uh, we have this predefined object ID. Uh, whenever any new document is created in the MongoDB database, it, it has an ID, whether it's user, whether it's notes, uh, that ID have a specific format. And MongoDB gives us a function that can be used to check if the ID is valid or not. So require, I can write the mongoose dot types dot object ID. Okay. So let's go down here inside this connect. I'm going to write if not user ID user ID should be exist because without knowing which user it is, we will not be able to update its data. Okay. So user ID or new username. Okay. This username is not the key. This is the new user. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to add this. If any of these does not exist, I'm simply going to return an error. All right. So this is returned. And after that, I'm going to check if the user is valid or not. The ID is valid or not. So I'm going to add it like this. So here you can see that the types which we can import it from mongoose at the top, you can see that it has been imported and uh, this is validating if the user is valid or not. So types object ID user is valid. Uh, or not. Okay. So after this, we also want to check if the user exists in the database or not. If it exists, then we are going to update it. So these validations are very important guys. So updated user equals to await user dot find one and update. It has these functions, find one and delete, replace and update. This is what I'm going to be using update. 
so we are going to pass an id okay so new object id which i have created above so user id this first value referring to this find function that this is going to find a particular user the next value is going to be the username okay username uh, this the username is something which i'm going to change from the client side okay uh, we can pass more keys as well but this is just for elaboration uh, i'm just passing the username need that needs to be updated i'm not going to change the email i'm not going to change the uh, password in this particular api but you can do that if you want and then i'm going to write new equals to true this is going to return a new object by updating it all right so after this i'm going to check if not updated user means that it is not updated it did not find or it, it was not successfully updated in any case uh, uh, the most of the case is that it did not find that particular user so i can simply return a message uh, with the 400 so i'm just going to copy all right and uh, I can simply write user not found or didn't update user successfully any message you want to write uh, so this is going to be updated once all these conditions are verified we are going to return a success response that user have been updated successfully so I'm just going to simply return this response username have been updated successfully uh, and again I'm simply going to return this error message inside the catch block in case up there cause any error because of internal issue all right these validations are very important so i've created this patch request now let's go to the postman and i'm going to create a new request add request and uh, let's name it update user so it, it has been saved uh, and uh, also i'm going to just copy it let's paste this and also i'm going to change the method type patch let's click on the body let's click on the raw let's click on this json and inside it i'm going to pass the data one is the user id and other one is the username so this is how we have implemented our api all right so within this object i'm going to write the user id this is going to have this id and then this new username this is going to have a new username let's verify these names this is the user id and this is the new username all right let's first give the wrong user id okay and um, new name okay uh, and also we can set the headers in our post request wherever we are sending the body we need to set uh, this one the content type is already set that is fine uh, by the postman okay let's go to the body and let's click on the send okay you can see that it has actually returned the invalid user id uh, this is where it is actually returning because the user id is not valid let's go click on this you get users and these are all the users which we have in the database and let's copy one of the id from here let's try to change the name of the second user let's copy it and let's give the correct username let's click on the send and yes it has actually given us this username have been successfully updated and this is the new name okay let's click on this get users and let's try to verify this all right json and this is the new name it means that our patch request is working perfectly fine and now we are going to create the delete request in our route folder let's try to close this up uh, so that it becomes clear to us okay so now export const delete equals to async and then we have this request we have this uh, request class name arrow and then like this all right so now in order to implement the delete i want to explain you one thing 
previously we have been fetching the user id from the body i want to show you that how we can fetch the user id from the url from the query param uh, or you can say a search param okay so let's uh click on this thing uh try and i'm going to write the search params equals to url and then the request dot url okay this is going to give us uh, an option to get the data search params and then we are going to write the const user id equals to the search params dot get and then the user id so it's giving error let's hover over it property search param does not exist url search param actually it's only url yes the error is gone now and uh, there is some kind of error because we have missed this catch block all right so now we have got the user id from the search param from the url and now first of all i'm going to verify if that particular user exists in the database or not because if user is not already exists we are not going to delete that because it doesn't already exist uh, so i'm just going to add the same line of code which i added above if user does not exist user id is required this is an invalid user id okay and after that i'm going to verify if the user id is valid or not with the same kind of code which i added above types object id is valid uh, so this is going to give us the invalid user id error and after that once these conditions are verified we are going to write await connect and await uh first of all uh i'm going to delete all the nodes which are associated with this user but i'm going to do it later on once i will start implementing the nodes all right so const deleted user equals to await user dot find by id or delete like this and let's try to give it types dot object id user id okay so once that is done uh, we are going to check if the deletion is successful if or if user is not able to found with this user so then we are going to give us this message user not found actually above error that we did over here we are actually checking if user id exists or not we are not checking if user exists here we are checking if user exists in the database or not okay so this is going to delete this is going to if it is successfully done then we are going to simply return a success response that we have successfully deleted the user from the database um, so return success response user deleted successfully and similar to the above requests i'm going to simply return the error message within the catch block as well okay error deleting user uh, all right so now I'm going to go ahead to the postman and I'm going to add a new request, add a request and I'm going to change its type to delete. Let's also try to change the name for this request, delete a user. Let's save it. And uh, now you know that I need to pass an ID in the URL, not in the body, okay? so let's try to copy the url from here and let's try to add it and uh, first of all let's try to add the user id uh, like this user id equals to let's try to add the wrong id for now let's try to send invalid user id fine let's click on this get users let's get the correct user id and i'm going to click on the json let's try to delete this second user uh, to verify if it's successfully working let's pass it over here and let's click on the send and see user deleted successfully which is fine and uh, let's close this up let's verify if user is deleted from the database 
and I have clicked on the send request to get all the users from the database and yes we have deleted that second user and we can verify that from this database as well uh, let's try to refresh so here you can see that it only contains one user which is perfect now it's time to go ahead and create our notes API routes so for notes API let me close this file I'm going to create another folder inside the API route API folder actually and I'm going to create a folder dashboard within parentheses uh, because notes will be a part of the dashboard there can be settings API routes there can be reviews API uh, routes so all can exist inside the dashboard uh, within the parentheses this will not be a part of the URL I'm just structuring my code accordingly and inside it I can create the notes and inside it I can create the route.ts file and it will contain get put post delete all the crud APIs for this particular node alright so first of all I will be adding uh, importing few stuff at the top next response connect and the node the types and then the user okay and after that I'm going to create export const get async and then the request of type request arrow function and like this all right so here uh, let me click on the tab so we can have uh, these things so initially it is showing me uh, to get the notes uh, I'm gonna keep it what the tab 9 have assisted me but above this connect I'm going to receive the user ID because uh, the way I'm structuring my APIs for the notes is that only those notes should be returned which belongs to a specific user which is passed from the client side client will be passing a user ID that can be your front-end application or that can be postman a user ID can be of a logged in user okay uh, uh, which is not going to be a part of uh, or a topic for this video but let's say you are logged in and you have a user ID you will be passing to this API and only a specific notes for that logged in user will be returned okay so here first of all I'm going to give the search params and uh, this is going to be from the URL request dot URL all right and then I can get the user ID from the search param get user ID all right and now first of all I need to check if the user ID exists or not and if the user ID is valid or not initially in this file I just che separately checked the validation and the existence of the user ID but I can combine that here by adding the or operator okay invalid or missing user ID if user does not exist or if it is invalid then I'm simply going to give a message invalid or missing user ID after that we can connect this which is already getting done okay and uh, after that I can find that particular user okay uh, check if this particular user ID which is being passed from the client side actually exists or not okay and for that I can use the find by ID function so const user await user dot find by ID and then the user ID okay and after this I can check if this user exists or not in the database All right so if it does not exist we are simply going to return an error message that user does not found I'm just checking all these things I'm just explaining you that these validations are very very important uh, for the quality and for the performance of your app so once that is done now I need to find specific notes for that particular user whose ID is being sent from the client side okay so I can write the const notes await note dot find and here I can write the user uh, and then I can write the new types dot object ID user ID okay so uh, let me remove this line as well 
and then it is simply going to return these nodes. So nodes are going to be fetched for this particular user whose ID is matching with the ID being sent from here. All right. Uh, and then error in fetching nodes, which is being sent. All right. So now we are done with creating this route. Now let's go to our uh, postman and I'm going to create another uh, request here. Uh, like this and add a new request. Okay. So this is going to be get notes. I'm, I've changed its name and this is going to be the local host slash API slash users. I'm going to give it the notes. Uh, let's first try to fetch the notes uh, directly. Let's click on the send invalid or missing user ID. Yes, user ID does not found. And then I can simply write the user ID. Let's give it the invalid. It's going to give me the same. Now I'm going to give this user ID, which is being added over here. Uh, and let's send. And now it is returning empty array because this particular user have not created any notes. This is fine. Now we need to create the post request API, which will be creating the new nodes. And uh, uh, for that creation process for the nodes, again, I will be using the user ID because for creating the node, I need to pass this user ID property while creating a new node. Okay. So let's go ahead and let me just close it like this. So it becomes clear to me. And uh, now, uh, I'm going to create a post request below. So I can start off by writing export async. Uh, well, I can write uh, post like this. I can use the arrow function. We can use other uh, functions as well. So post async request of type request arrow function and like this. So inside it, first of all, again, try catch is must for handling errors. All right, so that is added. So inside the try block, what we need to do first, we need to get the user ID because for creating a new node, we need to have a user ID against which we want to create nodes. Okay, this user can be of, uh, can be related to the logged in user or any other relationship you want to make. After this, we want to receive the data for the new node and that data is the title description. If we go to this schema for the nodes, we have title and the description and obviously the user ID, which we will be passing while creation of the nodes. For getting the data for the node, we can fetch it from the body and I have already shown you how to get the data in my users API. We can get it using a request.json body and the body is giving us the title and then the description. Okay. Uh, and after this, I'm going to check if user ID exists or not and if user ID is valid or not, just like I've already done in my get request user ID existence, if it is valid or not. Okay. Um, I'm just quickly moving further because I've already explained you these things. I don't want to waste your time uh, listening me or watching me, just saving my time, copy pasting these things. And after this, again, we need to connect to the database uh, for processing. So uh, after connecting to the database, we need to check if the user actually exists in the database or not. Okay, this is very important step. User exists in the database. If not, user not found. If user is not found, uh, it means um, user ID is not passed from the client side. And if user ID is not passed from the client side, it means user might not be logged in. User is not authenticated. Can be any reason. Then we will not. We should not actually create the nodes for that. So that has been said. So after that, we need to create a new node. So new node equals to new node and uh, this is going to receive the title coming from the body this is going to receive the description and then the user id which is of type this user id okay and this is going to create a new node once that is created i need to save it new node dot save Okay, so once that is done, I'm going to return a message along with the new node data. This is going to return. And also let's add the error message as always. This is very important. So our post request is ready now. And uh, 
now it's time to go to the postman and uh, I'm going to add another request and this is going to be a post request this is going to be localhost colon 3000 slash api slash notes and question mark user id uh, let's give a wrong user id and also uh, its header should already be in set like the content type uh, application slash json okay this is what it does if it's not uh, uh, we can actually add that if it's not already added but we can go to the body and we can click on the raw and then the json this has been set now let's go to the headers uh, it's not added yet but if i start adding like this let's add the title uh, note one title and then the description this is going to be note one description and we don't need to pass a user id user id is being fetched from this uh, route now i'm going to click on the send so it is giving me an error that invalid or missing user id so we have this get users let's fetch all the users we have this one only user and uh, we can go and give the correct user id okay let's click on the send note created all right guys so we have this one note created let's create another note against the same user okay note to title note to description let's click and this is the new note have been created now let's get all the notes against the same user id send and now you can see that this particular user belongs to this uh, note and uh, i'm going to create a new user uh, let's see three and uh, i'm going to give it umair jamil and i'm going to create a new user now let's let's close it let's save it and let's close it let's get all the users now and uh, this one is the new i'm going to use this id now to actually create a new node this is going to be the node 3 and this is going to be the node 3 so let's create that node and this node have been created now uh, if i get all the nodes let's see and here you can see that only two nodes are returned but actually there are three nodes created if we can verify it uh, from this database mongodb uh, you can see that nodes have been added and there are three nodes actually added over here am i able to uh, move it up no I'm, I'm not so you can see that there are three nodes but here we have two nodes because we have this particular user id being uh, added over here now if i try to add the first user id the second one actually uh, this one and uh, let's try to update that let's send and now you can see that only one note is returned because we have actually passed the one user id awesome so we are done validating with this user id and same kind of things can be done using the patch and delete note uh, i'm quickly going to do that um, and uh, so let's get started so this is going to show me the patch request like this so for updating the data for the note we need multiple things we need the user id coming from the params uh, we need the node ID as well that uh, this particular node and this data for that node needs to be updated and also the data the new data that needs to be updated for that particular node whose ID is being sent through the body we can send the node ID uh, uh, from the body and we can send the node ID from the URL param as well it's up to us uh, but uh, I'm first going to add the try catch block here let's quickly add that uh, like this and inside the try first of all let's get the data for the note um, i'm receiving the note id title and the description through the body okay and then i'm going to receive the user id through the url param so after this i'm going to check if the note id 
and note id is valid or not using this condition just like i have been doing it for the user id this is very important and also same things i need to do for the user as well if the user id is valid uh, and actually exists uh, and then after that uh, i'm going to connect because this is how uh, we are going to connect with the databases okay so now i need to check if the user exists in the database or not this is very important all right and then i'm going to find a particular node whose id matches with the id which is being passed from that body okay because first i need to find the particular node uh, using this note id then i will be able to update these titles and then the description okay so below this i'm going to add that check so here you can see that i'm using the await note find one i'm passing the note id and passing the user id because if you remember when we create a new note it also have that user property along with it okay so if both of these matches then i'm going to return the node okay id and then the user you can see that the properties are matching underscore id and this user if the node is not successfully fetched against this node id and the user id then i'm simply going to return an error message okay these validation again guys are very very important all right and after this this is something uh, where we are going to update the data updated node equals to the await node find by id and update first of all i need to pass the node id then i need to pass the title and the description this node id is going to find this node title is going to get updated uh, uh update the data for title and description and this is new new object is going to get returned okay uh, if that is done successfully then we are simply going to return uh, updated note yeah updated note all right so i hope that you are understanding i'm not wasting time because i have already explained these things uh, so patch is done now let's try to update a particular note with the user id so let's close all these things first of all let's get all the notes first of all so i'm going to copy this note id first of all let's try to add a new request let's try to change it to patch and let's try to add the local host colon 3000 slash api slash notes sl question mark user id equals to and now i need to pass a specific user id uh, and uh, then i need to pass it in the body as well so let's give it raw and then the json and inside it i need to pass the updated title i need to pass the updated description and also i need to pass the node id if we go over here we know that it should be coming inside the node id from the body okay all right so now uh, let's click on this I'm going to update this particular node. So let's add the node ID and uh, let's try to save it. And we have this user ID. Uh, I'm going to update the title. So node three title, node three description. Let's try to add this one. Updated. And also description updated. All right uh let's try to uh, do that now let's try to send note updated all right guys um and this user actually uh created this particular note the id which i'm using over here all right so let's see we have this updated and if we get all the notes let's try to send 
let's try to see and you can see that it is updated successfully so our patch request is working fine now the last request we need to add is the delete request after that i will show you how we can add the dynamic route for example uh, we want to have a dynamic param for example nodes here we have the dynamic url dynamic node slug um, like my first note this is not a query param this is the dynamic value and any any value can exist over here and uh, using that dynamic value i will show you how we can get the data for a single note okay not all the nodes after this i will talk about uh, protecting our whole backend using middlewares and how we can add middlewares to specific number of apis so let's add the delete note request now so i'm going to write export const delete async request so try catch error like this so here uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to receive both the note id and user id from the search param from the url like this okay the reason i'm getting the note id and the user id note id is the one we need to detect which node needs to be deleted and also the user id we want to make sure that the user who created this node who is the owner of this node should be able to delete this node any other user should not be able to delete this node okay so again we need to check if user id exists note id exists and user id valid note id valid so we can add these kinds of checks which i have already shown you in above requests as well okay um, after this we are going to connect to the database okay <clears throat> after this i'm going to check if user exists or not okay in the database this user uh, if not exists we are going to show this message uh, and uh, after that we are going to detect if a particular node exists in the database not whose node id and the user id matches with this one which is being passed from the client side okay this step is very important okay so i'm going to add this line so first of all i'm finding one with the id of note and the user id and if note is not found it means that note not found or does not belong to a user okay so once that is done i'm going to find a particular node with the id and also delete this thing all right uh, and then i'm simply going to return a success message that the node have been deleted successfully and also i'm going to add this thing over here all right so let's move here i've already added this request and it is going to have this api slash notes question mark user id and also it has this node id and we can also see all the params through the params tab over here all right uh, so uh, what is that beer token i'm going to click on the no auth we don't need that for now uh, and now uh, let me send this okay user not found <clears throat> that is fine uh, this is where we are actually detecting so what i need to do is i need to first get all the notes uh, for a specific user let's try to get all the users first so let's try to get the notes for this first user let's get notes like this and these are all the notes belong to that user let's try to delete this note delete note i've added this all right and now if i send this it's going to show me the same error because the user id is wrong so let's try to copy this id add over here let's try to send node deleted successfully now let's get all the notes now you can see that a particular node have been deleted belong to this user and we have only one node left for that user now it's time to go ahead and create a dynamic route to fetch a single node using the dynamic route id
So for creating a dynamic API route, I'm going to create a new folder inside the dashboard, inside the notes, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to name it note within the square brackets. Square brackets means that this particular folder can take any number of alphanumeric values inside it. So the API would be slash API slash notes slash anything. Okay. And inside it, I'm going to create route dot ts. All right. So first of all, I will be adding these imports which are required. And uh, now I'm going to write the export const get request. And this is going to be an async operation. And this is going to be the request and then the request and we need to have a second param because we need to get the value from the dynamic param which is coming from the URL. This is not a query param question mark. This is the part of the URL. So this can be done using the context of type params of type any. Okay. So inside it, we can get the node ID like the const note ID and context params note. Okay, I need to add equal sign over here. This note belongs to the name of this uh, keyword within the square brackets. Okay, you need you cannot change. It needs to be matched. Now, whatever we send slash API slash notes slash ABC, ABC will be received in note ID. Okay, this is called the dynamic route. Now let's try to add the try catch block. Okay, like this. All right. So inside the try, um, along with fetching the note ID, uh, I want to have a check for the user as well, because only a uh, uh, allowed user should be able to get a single note as well. The user who created this note should be able to access this single note. So again, I can actually get the user data from the query param like this. And uh, after this, I can check if the note ID or user ID actually exists or not like this, just like I've been doing before. Um, and after that, let's connect to the database. Uh, once that is done, we need to check if user exists or not in the database. And we can also check if, uh, uh, if the note exists or not, which we are going to detect just now. So find one with the, this ID of the note, which is being fetched from the dynamic URL and also the user ID who have access to it. So this note, if belongs to a specific user who created it and this note, which is coming from the U param, uh, have, uh, have this ID. Okay. So once that is added, we are simply going to return the note. And, uh, if there is an error, we can simply add this one. All right. So that is done. Now let's come back to the postman. I've already created its request and uh, initially there were no URL exist. That's why it's showing this error. Now see this URL. Okay. It has this is not a query param. This is the dynamic value and it is referring to the node ID because this is how we are fetching the node ID. We need to give it the correct node ID. So I'm going to get all the nodes first of all. And uh, this is the node ID. I'm going to get this one. Let's see uh, this one I'm adding over here and user ID is the query param. So I can first let's give a wrong user ID user not found. Um, now let's give the correct user ID from here. So which is the part of the query. We can update it from here as well. Let's send. And now you can see that a single node is being fetched uh, using the dynamic URL. This is perfect. Now we are done with creating all the APIs which were uh, planned for this video. Now it's time to talk about authenticating and protecting the whole backend like uh, in case that uh, you have deployed your backend 
and even if you have to use your backend apis in your front end application then you should have a token which you need you can pass in the headers uh, using that bearer token you should only be able to access that um, all the whole backend this will not be a real token i'm not going to be using i'm just storing a constant value for the token but you can have your um, dynamic jwt token if you want so that can be done using the middlewares in next js uh, so let's get started first of all i'm going to create a new folder here middlewares okay and inside this middlewares we can have a more folder uh, let's say the middleware for apis only so i'm going to add the apis all right so first of all i'm going to create a new file and i'm going to give it the auth middleware dot ts let's close these files uh, so this has been added now there is one another file which is built in in next.js and we cannot change its name uh, this file is very important and i'm going to be importing auth middleware uh, i have missed spell it this is auth middleware like this okay so first of all let's come to the auth middleware so let's export a function and this is going to be the auth middleware this is going to take the request of type request uh, return type for now let's give it an any request type uh, so first of all let's say that i'm passing a bearer token from the client and the, you know the bearer token comes in uh, in the key named authorization and uh, then the value consists of two strings with the space bearer space and the actual token okay if i show you in the postman uh, get users auth and this bearer token this is already added currently but uh, uh, let's remove it uh, we we can actually we need to add bearer space and then the actual token uh, I've, I've created a separate video on the advanced uh, technical concepts of postman in my channel that includes the dynamically creating these token dynamically creating the environment variables uh, whenever we hit any kind of api so that is a very important video if you want to learn everything about postman pretty much everything not uh, the 100 percent thing but uh, most of the things will be cleared from that video you can search uh, postman tutorial series on my channel uh, now let's come back and here i'm going to get it get the token and in order to get the token i can get it request.headers.get and it will be get authorization question mark if authorization exists then i'm going to split it with the space because bearer space and then i'm going to get the second value all right so once that is done uh i'm going to simply return is valid because this is what i'm going to be received in the middleware and i'm going to create a new function validate token i can directly write my code here but this is more convenient and understood uh, like this so above this i'm going to create this function so const validate token equals to token string and like this okay uh, it will have this colon this is passing the token to it uh, the argument string is not assignable uh, to it and uh, yeah we can we can actually fix it once I write code so here what we can do is we need to actually write the valid token equals to token dot length for now I'm not going to verify the actual token format if it is true or not if it is uh, meeting the requirements or not i'm just checking if the token have length then it is it, this token is good we can authenticate user but you need to add your own logic uh, and check if the token is exists token have length and this is the correct token okay uh, currently if token have length this will become true uh, now i can write if token does not exist or if valid token doesn't is not true okay 
uh, then I'm simply going to return false. Otherwise, I'm simply going to validate my token. All right. Uh, so uh, it's giving me an error. There has to be an if condition. All right. So this token, uh, I can give it to any because sometimes this is not. Uh, so I'm going to use this auth middleware in my main middleware file. This is the predefined file. Uh, so let's uh, add, first of all, I'm going to add export default function middleware. This is the built-in function which needs to be added. Request, request, and then the middleware. All right. First of all, I'm simply going to return next response coming from the next server dot next. This is going to validate our APIs. Uh, <clears throat> now I'm going to add export const config equals to this. And now I'm going to add the matcher. Matcher is going to be slash API slash any path. Okay, static like this. All right, now if I go over here, let's try to get all the users. Still, I will be able to fetch all the users. Okay, uh, because I've not added any conditions. So this middleware is actually applied to this configuration which I have added here. Now let's try to fetch that auth middleware. So I'm going to write const auth result equals to auth middleware request. Okay, uh, auth middleware needs to be imported from the auth middlewares. And if not auth result, this is going to be is valid property which is coming from that file. Okay, then I'm simply going to return an error message unauthorized. Okay, so now let's verify. I'm going to send. It's returning HTML. Let's go. Uh, middleware, this one. Uh, actually, if we don't send the token, then this length is going to give us some issues. So I'm not going to use it. Uh, you can validate it yourself based upon your condition. I'm simply going to validate it to true for now. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, send it and now you can see that unauthorized. The reason it's giving us unauthorized uh, because this part actually got true. So this token does not exist and uh, because this authorization have does not have a second value, token does not exist and this got true and that's why it returned false. When it returned false, then this is valid have become for true, uh, not true equals to uh, like um, it, the whole condition becomes true and this is what is going to get returned. Okay, this is not uh, something which is affecting here. All right, now if I go over here, I add the bearer token, bearer equals to any value. Okay, because we are not checking the validation of this. I'm going to send it. Now you can see that I am authenticated. Now every client side needs to pass some kind of bearer token to get access to all the APIs. If I want to get the notes, let's send. It's saying unauthorized. Again here, I need to pass the bearer token. Uh, it will be automatically populated because of the first request and I can send this out. Now I am authorized. Uh, this is where you need to validate your token correctly. I'm just showing you the way how things are done. All right. Uh, another thing uh, quickly, we, we, we need to organize our folder. We can create multiple folders and uh, move the requested and required requests within the, its specific folder, just like I've done it previously above. All right. One last thing I would like to explain you is adding multiple middlewares. So middleware means that whenever any API request gets hit, uh, that middleware gets executed before going to the API request. And this is what happening uh, over here as well. I want to create another middleware and both of these middleware will be executed before any API requests that uh, we trigger from the client side. 
so i'm going to create another file inside this apis so let's add the logging middleware okay so what it's going to do is going to log up the method and the url for the api which is getting triggered only for nodes api not for all the apis all right so this is going to have an export function logging middleware request of type request like this and simply going to return us an object let's say response request dot method plus request dot url all right and we need to add a space here as well uh, this is going to give us uh, the method which can be the get put post whatever it is and this is the url this is not going to work as it is now we need to use it in the middleware file now uh, so let's come back here and uh, above this auth middleware we need to log this out so if request we need to check uh, the route path okay if then we are going to use this middleware so request dot url dot includes slash api slash nodes like this okay if it is uh, the nodes request uh, which is getting triggered then we can write the const log result equals to logging middleware request okay and then this is going to be the console log request and then we need to log the result log result and we have the response which is coming from that logging middleware over here so let's keep watching this terminal because on the server side uh, we have the logged output in the terminal on the server side it will not be logged on the browser browser is only for the client side okay so let's come back to here first of all let's get the users it has fetched the users in the terminal it does not show this message the logging middleware because we have checked that only this api nodes request needs to be triggered now let's get all the nodes yes you can see in the terminal now you can see that the request the method type and the complete url for the api is being shown which is perfectly fine this is what we wanted to do and using this if we if you need to detect um, that any api route does not exist within this api folder you can check it again in this middleware file you can create an array of all the routes which you have created in this api folder and then you can check if uh, the url uh, request includes uh, any value from that array it means that it exists in your project in the api otherwise you can return an error message that not found this api route does not found all right uh, this is some kind of idea which i have given you i'm sure there will be uh, there is a better way um, uh, i've shown this thing in my previous videos as well uh, where i have created the blog uh, application e-commerce apps and you can check my previous videos so for now i hope that you have got an idea how you can build your rest apis in next.js frameworks along with the front end if you have learned something new do subscribe my channel like my video and comment below if you have any question thank you so much for watching my videos guys i'll be creating more videos in next.js and also other technologies as well like git github angular uh, Vue.js, and the backend stuff like the node express mongodb and also uh, some devops thing like the AWS, Docker, CI, CD, uh, Nginx, um, and these kinds of topics. All right, guys, see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.